Before we get started, a quick note. This video took a long time to make. As a result, it's no longer anywhere near topical. Whoops. I think the ideas covered within it are still relevant, though. So one of the most recent bits of gaming news is that boogeyman Jack Thompson has come out in support of Gamergate. Now, it would be really easy to just talk about how hilarious it is that they went from comparing people they don't like to him to discredit them, to going, hey, I guess he's not that bad after all. I mean, there was a 4chan thread not long ago where they were arguing about whether or not they should get him to support Anita Sarkeesian because his presence would hurt their reputation. I wanted to talk about it and the implication that by their own logic, their reputation is now tarnished. But as I was thinking about it, I kept coming back to this tweet I saw from Total Biscuit. You see, he does not dig this guilt by association thing one bit. Now the question is, is guilt by association a valid rhetorical device in any situation? This is a good time for me specifically to delve into this situation, because frankly, it's never been easier for me to fall into that kind of thinking. I mean, Gamergate includes some pretty prominent misogynists, actual Nazis, and now the king of censorship and the most hated man in gaming, Jack Thompson himself. If the people in a movement say something about that movement, Gamergate looks pretty spectacularly bad right now. But maybe TB is right. Maybe it's entirely irrelevant. I wanted to put myself on the other side of the situation so that I could see it a bit more clearly. So I decided to look at an argument I hear a lot and which always bugged me. Did you know Hitler was a vegetarian? This one always got under my skin, but I never really thought about the logic of it further than about whether or not it was true. Let's assume for the sake of a thought experiment, though, that it is true. Hitler was definitely a vegetarian. Everything bad he ever did happened exactly the way history remembers it. Does that say anything about current, modern-day vegetarians? No, I don't think it does. That would be ridiculous. The idea that one guy from that long ago says anything about an entire modern-day group seems insane. Let's ratchet up the thought experiment, then. What if modern-day vegetarians were neo-Nazis at a rate higher than the national average? Let's say there was a census, and it turned out that out of the American population, 1% were Nazis. However, out of the population of American vegetarians, that number jumps to 5%. Does this now say something about modern-day American vegetarians? This, by the way, isn't entirely an insane direction to take, since there are a few prominent vegans and vegetarians who are currently being accused of ties to Nazism. Nazism? Not Nazism? Uh, how, how would you even... Uh, never mind. I still don't think it says anything about any specific vegetarian, but I'm a little uncomfortable now. I think that means we're going in the right direction. What if it were 90%? Now, I discussed this thought experiment with a few people, and they still seem to think that even in the 90% scenario, the 10% of non-Nazi vegetarians are entirely fine. I felt in my gut that this was wrong, but it took me a while to figure out exactly why. See, in the situation where 90% of vegetarians are Nazis, the 10% benefit passively from their inclusion. Having a larger group means you're more likely to find available food to purchase, and odds are that if you eat at a vegetarian restaurant, you are aiding Nazism financially since the restaurant is likely either owned by Nazis or frequented by them. Also, it would be pretty reasonable for an outsider to look at you and assume that you were a Nazi, since statistically they're likely to be correct. So now we have something resembling a starting point. Boiling the reasoning down, we have three points where guilt by association seems to me to have some level of validity. 1. The number of problematic people in your group is high. 2. The problematic people in your group are powerful. 3. You benefit from the problematic actions taken by the group. Looking back at my increasingly silly thought experiment, we can see why the first scenario wasn't meaningful. 1. There is only one Hitler. 2. Being dead and reduced posthumously to a laughingstock mutes your power somewhat. My Führer, what they say is unheuerlich. The generalitet is the smallest of the German forces. They are all here! And 3. Hitler being a vegetarian doesn't in any way aid vegetarianism. If anything, the opposite would be the case. In the 90% example, 1. There are a lot of problem people, 2. A group that large has a lot of power to intimidate and harm, and 3. Any accomplishment they make towards making it easier to live as a vegetarian also benefits the 10%. How does this tie into Gamergate? Well, Total Biscuit cares about ethics and game journalism, as Gamergate supposedly does as a whole. He follows this motivation to support the Gamergate hashtag. 
Many people who support this hashtag have openly harassed, doxxed, and sent death threats to those the movement targets. This creates an environment of fear which benefits the entire movement. Every time someone would have written an article they believe in and don't because they're afraid for their safety, everyone in Gamergate benefits. Everyone allied with Gamergate also benefits. Assuming it was an anti-Gamergate article in the first place anyway. Every time those guys from Stormfront or A Voice for Men or the Pickup Artist community tweet the hashtag, everyone in Gamergate benefits from the increased hashtag penetration. On top of this, those groups also benefit from the positivity they get from siding with Gamergate. Jack Thompson, in particular, comes to mind here. It's entirely reasonable for society to lump TB in with the undesirables in his group because he insists on marching under the same banner and benefits from their presence and actions. They, in turn, benefit from the legitimacy and brand awareness which his massive audience brings to the table. So then, what to do when a situation like this arises? After a lot of thinking, I've settled on this. Upon discovering that you are in a group which contains people whose actions reflect poorly on you, in TB's case, those who would use death threats and harassment to advance a misogynistic agenda and silence criticism, you enter what I'm calling a bedfellow bind. A bedfellow bind can be resolved in one of three ways. One, consumption. You do nothing to differentiate yourself from the harm caused by your group and reap the consequences. In my thought experiment, our vegetarian accepts the pros and cons of being mistaken for a Nazi. The world entirely reasonably lumps him in with the worst in his group. 2. Dissolution. You renounce your membership of said group. Our vegetarian renounces the title of vegetarian. Importantly, this does not mean he suddenly needs to start eating meat, only that he does so without the pride which his membership in the group previously held. Opposition. The problematic people in your group are now your enemy. You must claim them, then fight them. You cannot simply wash your hands of them by claiming that they do not represent you. You cannot issue a half-assed non-denouncement which carries the implication that you think it's stupid that you're doing that. The people doing what you don't want to be associated with have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that what they're doing makes you their enemy. You have to take an active stance in mitigating the harm they cause, and you have to fucking mean it. More importantly, when you do this, it needs to be loud. Everyone who knows you or cares about you needs to know that this is the path you have chosen. In TB's case, the bind reads like this. TB is supporting Gamergate and its goals. By doing so, he is in a bind with misogynists, white supremacists, stalkers, harassers, and terrible artists. No! Oh god, get it away. Ugh. Worse still, due to the size of his fan base, many of these harassers are also likely his fans, worsening the bind. In this case, the three options play out thusly. In the consumption option, TB continues to support Gamergate without taking responsibility for its worst members. I get the impression that it bothers him that people are lumping him in with them, so I don't think this is the path he wants to choose. In the dissolution option, the one I recommend here to be honest, he would refuse to support Gamergate. He would continue to fight for journalistic ethics simply under a different banner. This makes a lot of sense from both an ethical and a utilitarian point of view. Gamergate did start as a harassment campaign against a single woman instigated by a jilted lover and fueled by allegations of sexual indiscretion. This is undeniable, since if the blow-up had been about journalistic ethics, the journalist would have been the target and not the game developer. Game developers have very little obligation towards journalistic ethics. What they do have is an obligation to make a good game. So even if you believe that it has nothing to do with misogyny now, it has been irrevocably tainted in the view of the public. By distancing his cause from Gamergate and from those within it who don't care in the slightest about ethics, he would strengthen his ability to actually achieve his goals. I would suggest for a new group to be created which is about ethics and games journalism alone. No weird MRA nonsense, no Nazis, no right-wing anti-feminism hate memes, no fake cartoon women telling everyone to shut up, just ethics. Call it Gamers for Ethical Games Journalism. Uh, okay, no, that's Gefedge. Good lord. Look, the name doesn't matter. I'm not a PR person. What matters is that TB has a large enough following that he could start a smaller but far more effective movement. Many Gamergaters are fed up with the hypocrisy and hate tied into Gamergate and are only staying in it because of people like TB and because they genuinely care about the cause. Also, many of the people who are opposed to Gamergate due to the damage it's done actually do care about journalistic ethics. The media has 
ignored the fact that many gamer gators have been hacked and doxxed. The media has had difficulty figuring out how to effectively balance the need to allow reviewers to express their opinions with the tyranny of Metacritic. Heck, I love ethics. I want those in lots of places, journalism included. Sign me up and we can cram the ethics and all the ethics holes together. In the opposition option, TB takes an active stance against the toxic people in his midst. This is not simply pointing out that he disagrees with them and washing his hands, no. He has to fight them. This would involve making it entirely clear that harassment is wrong, and that if someone does it, he does not want them as a viewer. This isn't simply what we've gotten so far which amounts to I don't condone harassment but I shouldn't have to say this because it should be basic human decency. This needs to be forceful and clear. He would need to take steps to stop people from reading between the lines and assuming he was bullied into it. Furthermore, he needs to get to know the people who are the most harmed by this situation and understand where they're coming from and why they see him as the enemy. I think this choice would be an interesting spectacle to watch, but it seems like a lost cause. There's too much bad involved with Gamergate for me to suggest some kind of hashtag GG clean slate as a sensible option. Hey look, gate rhymes with slate. I did a clever. I'll give him credit though, in the time since I wrote this, TB's come out against harassment pretty loudly. Yay! I mean, I'd prefer it if he also did it on his YouTube channel, but I'll take what I can get. Now he just needs to call out some of the most prominent harassers and to be careful not to enable harassment himself. Now, TB, I know you're probably not watching this, but if you are, you may think I'm being unreasonable to ask all this of you. Here's the thing though, you're wrong. I'm not asking you for anything. I'm just clarifying the situation you're in. Are you angry? You should be angry. These people forced you into this by doing horrible things in the name of something you care about. Every time they do this, they drag your name through the mud. You, as a powerful and noticeable individual, have the most to lose from this, and thus your bedfellow bind is the most critical to resolve. By being placed in this bind by these people, you have already lost something. The choice that remains is whether you want it to be your reputation, your pride, or your time. Now, I think it would be hypocritical for me to describe a concept like this without applying it to myself first. Am I in any bedfellow binds? Yes. There is an ugly misogyny streak in the atheism community. Influential men like Richard Dawkins have used the guise of science and rationality to support harmful and obnoxiously sexist rhetoric, and the result on the community has been brutal. Some of the most prominent atheist voices on the internet have followed his example to repeatedly spout self-indulgent, spiteful nonsense which does not hold up to any kind of careful scrutiny. Somewhere along the line they picked up the idea that empathy is yet another ideology to be tossed aside for the advance of our species. This idea is neither scientifically sound or ethically defensible. I do not believe in a supernatural creator. I have up to this point considered myself an atheist. I am in a bedfellow bind with atheism. For this, I choose dissolution. I am no longer an atheist. I now wear no title related to my belief or non-belief in any supernatural concept. I derive no pride or satisfaction from these beliefs or lack thereof. Next, there is a strain of harassment and bitterness within the gaming community. This is not limited to one subgroup, though it does, again, have a nasty misogynistic streak. I noticed, for instance, that a lot of the victims of harassment received by members of Gamergate also happen to be women. It just seems to be the accepted tactic. One of the most prominent figures in opposition to Gamergate, Bob Chipman, aka Movie Bob, one of my favorite people in the world, recently essentially tweeted that he thinks harassment and doxing are okay if they're used on the right people. There are no bad methods, only bad targets. Bullshit. I choose opposition. I am a gamer and I will not accept my community acting this way. If you decide to silence someone's opinion through harassment and doxing, especially if you're aiming it specifically at women, you are not my ally. If you support the people employing these tactics or support the tactics themselves, you are not my ally. I commit myself henceforth to doing everything I can to improve this community in its ideas, its methods, and its representation to the society at large. 
We have the unique distinction to be alive at the birth of an entirely new and exciting artistic medium, and I will not let petulant, stupid squabbles like this tear it apart.